His mentor Mordred died in battle. Helbert was like, Grimaldus, you are now the recluse hug of the Hell's Reach Crusade. Grimaldus was like, oh, I don't really want to do that. Oh, well. And he kind of <laughs> became, <laughs> became that sounds like a, that sounds like a scene from Harry Potter. Like, with, what's like, what? little, what's like, it's not the elf that's Dobby, but it's the other one. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're a reclusiarch, Grimaldus. I'm a what? You're oh, a reclusiarch, but I'm just Grimaldus. <laughs> Did you just turn that into a Hagrid Harry Potter like reference? <laughs> Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Law Crimes. This is the podcast for beginner to expert. For all the fans from just starting out in Warhammer all the way to those dedicated originals. This is the perfect place for everyone. I am Hal, and I'm joined by Eli. Hello. I'm joined by Colin. Hello. And Andy. We're all respective YouTubers within the Warhammer space, and I pass over to Colin. Today, we are going to be talking about everyone's favorite, maybe not everyone's favorite, but enough people's favorite, Space Marine <laughs> Chapter, <laughs> the angriest fellows on the block, hate everyone, they're uh, sometimes a bit rude, but that hasn't stopped everyone from loving them, We're the Black Templars. Yeah. <laughs> Templars. No, no, how dare you. And the Black Templars. Today... It will be Andy and Eli uh, taking the wheel. So why don't I pass it on over to Eli to take us off. Thank you, good sir. I will be doing the beginner section of the biggest chads in the entire Imperium. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> theocratically correct in all ways, shapes, and form. Talk, Anyways, let's get pain. into it. <laughs> let's get into it. So, the Black Templars are an Imperial Fist successor chapter created in the second founding, which was the founding in which all of the first successor chapters were created, alongside the Crimson Fists and the Soul Drinkers and the other guys. What's their name? Oh, Executioners. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> they were created out of uh, necessity more than anything else, as Doran being the Giga Chad he is was a big denier of the Codex Astartes, but was being branded a traitor, and there was going to be civil war, and it's going to be really, really awful. So he gave in, and he made his successor chapters. Uh, they are perhaps direct evidence that the Emperor has achieved godhood, as you will discover his blessings upon them are very real indeed. Lorgar was right. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'll say that. <laughs> First so. Captain Sigismund. Uh... It was given the chapter. He was, to my knowledge, this might be a lore crime, I might have read this wrong, but he was the first, one of the first Chad believers of the Lictito Divinitatis, the little pamphlet that said the Emperor's God, pretty much. Um, along with this, he had a few issues in the, during the heresy in his time, controlling his zeal and emotion, which, I mean, as an Imperial Fist, you're supposed to be very stoic all the time, you know, very cool, very calm. And overall, Dorn had pretty much disowned him for this, saying, like, you are no son of mine, all that stuff. It's very um, sad but anyways, moment. Yes. Very sad. And Sigismund was the leader of the Sword Templars of the Imperial Fists, and pretty much acted independently during the Siege of Terra, just going around, killing everyone. He was pretty pretty cool. He beat Karn, even. Uh, anyways, mm. Dorn mm. made him the first ever Emperor's Champion, giving him the Black Sword. He would later be given the duty of High Marshal to the newly created Black Templars chapter. And this new chapter was given all the most zealous and vicious fighters of the Imperial Fists. Ever, so the coolest guys of the Imperial Fists, pretty much. Yeah, I and mean, they, they literally were like, hey, Crimson Fists, like all the noobs, newbies, <laughs> the chapter. You go to the Crimson Fists, and all the guys mm -hmm. we really like, we could hang out with at a party... You know, they're pretty chill. You can go to the Imperial Fist OG chapter, but like all the crazy guys, <laughs> they can go to mm -hmm. the Black Templars. We don't you want make, to You make it sound like all the frat bros. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, a party in the Black Templars. Yeah, they're like, they're crazy. Like all the crazies, they go to the Black Templars. We don't want to hang around with them. It's more like a choir, met... <laughs> choir boy party, by the way. Can we just. <laughs> <laughs> Have you met Deacon? Deacon is like lighting candles and doing like push ups at <laughs> four in the morning. What is wrong with him? <laughs> Those are the frat yeah. potties with the Bardy Count. Guys. Bardy Count. <laughs> 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 
all right, all right. So ever ever since their creation, they have been on an eternal crusade, marking the longest crusade in Imperial history. Due to this, they are a fleet-based chapter and are very spread throughout the galaxy. They are not Codex compliant by any means, because the Codex is for nerds, and their numbers have swelled far larger than most chapters. They do have some organization, though, which the chapter is generally separated into multiple crusades, usually around three, give or take, and they're led by marshals, who answer to the High Marshal. Their captains are known as Castellans and lead the fighting companies of the Crusades. They favor fire and close combat, assaulting the enemies of the Emperor with reckless abandon. They are extremely brutal fighters who would make Korn himself blush. Not only this, but they are highly honorable as well, in some people's opinion. Maybe not the Xenos that they're slaughtering, but I mean, you know, those are Xenos anyway, so. I quite like this right now. I quite like this. It sounds like a dating profile. <laughs> 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 you know, they are so zealous, make corn blush. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. I love this is it. Emperor E Harmony, but Emperor Harmony. Anyway. <laughs> e Imperium. E there you go. <laughs> they hold very much a large amount of disdain for stealth and long range tactics. And suicidal charges of vengeance are not an uncommon sight within the chapter. And due to their very large numbers and their constant replenishment rates, uh, they can usually afford to employ these tactics. Their recruitment process brings individuals in known as neophytes, and these new recruits must serve on the front lines alongside a veteran if they are to fully ascend to the ranks of the Black Templars. It is dangerous and often fatal, but those who survive will have been baptized by fire, and their courage will be proven. So they don't just start out as fresh little babies. Mm. Straight, in, straight into it. Yes. The Templars abhor mutants, which includes psychers, having none in their ranks but for astropaths and navigators. Um, but they do not actually hate these specific psychers because they think that they're blessed by the Emperor. Cause... Yeah, there's, there's a weird discrepancy where they, they don't like librarians, but for some reason they're like, oh, astropaths, they are, they are linked to the Emperor despite all the incest. Like, yeah, they're fine, it's okay. <laughs> astropaths being the, the ones with the third eye in their yeah, head. The, literal the one forehead. That... And they help yes, guide if you, look, if you look into it, it's like, you're going to have a seizure. Um, they're like, that's fine. But no, the rest of you guys, oh, not a fan. I do have a small question. Say if, mm -hmm. you know, they say that they despise mutant. Like, up to what level would... Say, say if someone perhaps had an organ such as a pancreas oh, no. that maybe <laughs> oh, no. that maybe did not I, work i mean i mean <laughs> that, they, that, uh... that's, that's not a mutation that that's that's more of like a thing they'd be like brother i will graft you some new organs and i will put you into the ceramite of the imperium or a oh. dreadnought it's more of if 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 colin grew like a pancreas out of his head <laughs> and there might be some problems Bang. dead yeah mm -hmm. so. wow Wow, <laughs> they would they would they would kill me for being a mutant just for being weak and needing 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 medicine to live. Uh, I don't know. So, that, yeah. that, that's, I don't know. Uh, don't uh, don't hit your head too hard and get. That'd a bump. be more of an iron hands uh, thing to be like. We can give you a yeah, cybernetic true. pancreas. Aha. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> or the Eldar iron simply sing one awesome. into existence. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, no, no, no talking about the yeah, This is Black Templar Day. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> no sorry. More Eldar. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Dirty Xenos don't get to <laughs> living around here. Got bullied. <laughs> yeah, they, the Black Templars are very good at bullying Xenos and mutants and people who look oh, different yeah. than them. <laughs> I think we'll, yeah. de we'll debate that at some point, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anywho, uh, I'll read their creed, I suppose. Their creed is, I hope I'm not stealing a quote here that was going to be used later, but it's, Suffer not the unclean to live. Uphold the honor of the Emperor, abhor the witch, destroy the witch, and accept any challenge, no matter the odds. Exactly. We'll go into those specifically later, but for now, that's a good rundown. It's a good yes. way to uh, establish the mindset. Mm -hmm. We'll and... read them out in specific detail. It'll be fun. Mm -hmm. swear. Where is our... Where is big boy Sigismund now? Well, unfortunately... During the first Black Crusade, he tragically died at the hands of Abaddon the Despoiler. Spoilers for later on this this video, sorry. Uh, oh, it was not the spoiler. Spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he did he, he did put up a good fight. Um and he probably would have won if it were not for the powers of the Chaos Gods. Plot armor. 
uh, but yeah. they are, they, but they're now led by High Marshal Helbert at the moment, and uh, they showed very very large disdain for the newly made Primaris Marines. I think they actually killed them, but I, I'm not sure on that. Well, Maybe well, Andy well this this is a contentious point because a specific Crusade fleet didn't like the Primaris because they were like, oh, this isn't in keeping with the Emperor, but the overall Black Templars do not coincide with this belief. It's it, it, it's one of the reasons why the code... This is an interesting case study of like the Codex Astartes where literally within the, the, the single largest non-compliant chapter, you have a disagreement of belief. And this is... Mm -hmm. I, I know a lot of people make memes about, oh, Codex... Is, oh, Spacebook, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, this is a prime example, a primaris example, if you will, of why it's necessary <laughs> okay. because you literally have a chapter that are divided with belief on should we have Primaris? Should we not? And a splinter of the chapter literally murdered <laughs> all the Primaris. And it's like for those crikey. who are for those who are oh, into Warhammer, the Primaris Marines are the updated you if you ever see pictures or of like the little miniatures, they are the let's say new kids on the block in terms mm -hmm. of they are a new generation of space marines that have entered the 41st millennium and they are kind new. of a a clash of we say new bigger Tradition stronger marines and then words. these older firstborn uh slightly smaller marines and they're, this is it, they're the chat marines on that particular story <laughs> the book is called the throne of light and to to do a quick rundown a literally butchered the marshal who is in charge of the crusade fleet and all the primaris reinforcements i'm not in, i'm not exactly sure mm. on the custodies that were assigned to deliver like this new they died too. like like amazon prime here's your primaris it's like yeah i'm not sure about the custodians <laughs> but they literally killed the guy in charge and all the primaris and i don't i, I think that's pretty <laughs> sus this, this, the this becomes guy. this is a a prime example of why in a way, many of us love grim, dark stories. Mm -hmm. Just the the actual frustration. We'll we'll get into much more detail about the about why that the event of the Primaris's death is so frustrating. Um, <laughs> but it's a it's a it's a fantastic kind of insight into this chapter's like just utterly zealous mm -hmm. beliefs that they they will m murder. <laughs> uh, their own, brethren. their own, their own brethren, and it's a, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a mindset that we're going to delve, you know, into incredible detail in a, in a yes. moment. I mean, all I'm saying is, Call used traitor gene seed for the Primaris, Ooh. and I'm the Primaris say, answered a Mars before they answered it. I'm just going to say, Dantiok was an OG. He, he was an OG. Go, he was an OG. Yeah, that, that, tra traitor, don't mean Altar nothing. Altarvitz is an OG. OG. If you're loyal, but you're from a traitor legion, it's fine. It's fine. We all love <laughs> uh, a traitor legion loyalist. It's fine. Salt Harvard's mm -hmm. biggest chat in the Horus Heresy. Ooh, he is big, one of them. Holy boy. That'll be a story we'll tackle one day, and it's it's, it's, a, yes. it's, it's an absolute banger. Yes. <laughs> we are probably getting off track. There are more chapters who dislike Primary Springs as well, like the Dark Angels are arguably even worse. Um, Flesh Terrors. Yeah. Dark Angels literally <laughs> mind control them, which is kind of funny. But, anyways, I should probably hand things over to Andy to get into the specifics. Perhaps he'll let me talk about the Emperor's Champion, the coolest unit of the Black Templars. But okay, thank I'm you very much, Eli. Well, okay, so let's start from the very beginning. So, where did the Black Templars originate? So, we all we all know and love the Imperial Fists. The seventh legion of the Adeptus Astartes, Primarch Rogel Dawn. These are the stalwart defenders, the bulwarks of the Imperium. So, whenever anyone thinks of Space Marines, we all think of one specific pinnacle. I would say. I think that's fair to say, guys. But Erebus. Pinnacle Space Marine. No, not no, <laughs> not Erebus. Sorry, this is your heresy. No. Um. We all think when we think of like the the biggest Chad in the Warhammer Astartes <laughs> lexicon, we all think of Sigismund, right? I mean, this this yeah. isn't a this um. isn't a chapter master <laughs> Valrak video. Like Sigismund is arguably the most potent. Is the best word I can use to describe like, the best space marine possibly ever. I think Valrak is, to be fair, onto something 
with Sigismund here. But uh, yeah. I, I can see I can see why. I mean I'm I'm not a simp for the Imperial Fists or anything, <laughs> but Sigismund is like Big Sig, Siggy Boy, is possibly the greatest Astartes that will ever be. Like let's just do a quick um headcount, right? So Sigismund is the first captain of the Imperial Fist. So he's the best of the best of one of only 18 legions because we don't know what happened to the other two. So of 18 legions, he's one of 18 of the best of the best legions. Mm -hmm. Not only that, at the Siege of Terror, he's literally appointed the very first Emperor's Champion. Literally, when Rogel Dawn, Sanguinius, and the Emperor of Mankind himself go to attack Horus Lupercal on the Vengeful Spirit to end the Horus Heresy, he is appointed as the Emperor's Shadow. He's appointed as the single most important combative figure on Terra. Like, there's no one else who has that pedigree other than a Primarch. Like, Primarchs could probably... Hey, Siggy, smack, smack, clapped. But... But that's a Primarch. Sig is, that's a yeah. Primarch, yeah. And so Sigismund is... He has a well-deserved... Pretty much, un other than I'm sure the Night Lords fans are going to go, eh, Jago Severtari. He's like, no, 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 mm. doesn't count. But like, other than them, Sigismund is pretty much the undefeated Astartes. So what they do at the Siege of Terror is they give him a panoply of war, which is white and black. It adorns him with the uh, the the Templar Guard. So he he literally has the same color scheme as the Ecclesiarchy although the Ecclesiarchy doesn't exist at this point to that extent, but they literally say, you share the same colour scheme as the chaplains of the many Legiones Astartes. So there's one point in one of the books where Sigismund has a, a clash of conscience and he goes, I'm a bit guilty that I've relinquished my, you know, my yellow imperial fist colour scheme for the black of, you know, black and white of the, of, of the emperor. And the Ecclesiarchy, the, the chaplains say, you bear our mark, so you're the closest to the Emperor of anyone else. Not only that, his, his, his armor is called the Armor of Faith, and he is given a weapon called the Black Sword. Now, the Black Sword will go into a little bit later, but it's literally a very, I think we can all agree, a special weapon. And there's, a, there's an air of mystery particularly yeah. around it as well. It's, it's, it's not quite um it's not quite Nathaniel Garrow's weapon, where it's possibly literally Excalibur, but it you know, it's a similar weapon where it's, you know, it's like, oh, this is a special weapon. And he literally spends the entirety of the Siege of Terror roaming the battle like literally strolling through like all the conflicts, finding the biggest, baddest chaos guy and being like, Oi, wanna fight? <laughs> And that's Sigismund. He literally kills dozens of Chaos champions during the Siege of Terror and beats them all without breaking a sweat. This is the guy that basically, he, he well, I think, uh, was it Hal you mentioned earlier? He clapped Khan in the new Siege of Terror was, book? I think Eli mentioned yeah, that. Yeah. Oh, Eli Khan. mentioned it. Warhawk, yeah. Warhawk spoilers, sorry. But... Yeah, yeah well, <laughs> well, tough. It's like, there's a law crime right there. But, <laughs> like, he claps Khan the Betrayer. The most vicious Astartes that's ever lived. He literally holds his own against Jago Sevatarian until he cheats. He's arguably a better swordsman than Corswain of the Dark Angels or Raldoron of the Blood Angels. He is quite possibly the best, quote, mortal warrior in the Imperium. I think I um the part I enjoy for if someone if everyone is semi new to Warhammer. The, the the reason that Sigismund is truly held in such, I think maybe to all of us, in such high regard is the fact that Sigismund, although he has been transformed into an Astarte, and so he's been given new organs, so he's obviously been upgraded, he is utterly human. He has, he is not a psyker. He, is, he has nothing truly special about him other than the Pure skills that... Skill. And other than what you and I would have access, something that developed over 200 years of war during the Great Crusade, it's entirely <laughs> him. So you're saying it's the he's the personification of finesse. It's just yes, he would have done great in the knows... Emperor's Children. Oh, he's a disgusting man! <laughs> 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 Get out of here. 
Um, but no. So yeah, right, let's let's continue before any more heresy occurs. So, <laughs> you could say he's so the Sigismund... Phoenix Lord of the Black Templars. God, oh, God. God. <laughs> I can anyway. tell this is going to be an ongoing problem, isn't <laughs> it? <laughs> yeah, sorry, right, right. Come on, calm down, calm down. So Sigismund is clapping traitor forces left and right during the Siege of Terror. Oh no, Emperor of Mankind has been mortally wounded by the War Master, but big ups, he has just killed the War Master. Big win. So, the, tra the traitor forces flee to the Eye of Terror. The loyalists retreat and they fortify the throne world. Some are a bit late, like Gilliman and the Lion, and everyone kind of pulls their resources and they go, what do we do now? Now, most the, there's a brief point at the end of the Horus Heresy where pretty much all the loyalist le legions go and pursue the traitors and they try to destroy as many as they can before they escape. But some of pretty much most of them at this point that remain from that point escape into the eye of terror and as we all know the eye of terror is not a understandable commodity it's a tricky place to even observe so pretty much all the loyalists go we've driven them back to the eye of terror job done and they retreat but not sigismund sigismund literally waits and whilst Rabute Gilliman drafts the Codex Astartes and says we need to like consolidate the legions so that they aren't these massive war machines that are beholden to only their Primarch, such as Rogel Dawn, who is of course the Primarch of the Imperial Fist. Side note, um, Rogel Dawn wasn't a fan, as, as I think we've mentioned briefly, of the, uh, the Codex Astartes. He said, oh, you know, this isn't a good idea. But he had to relent when basically his forces possibly almost started the next heresy and so he went oh, okay hold on my own forces have assaulted and destroyed imperium forces in a naval warfare situation <sighs> i'm kind of in a bind i have to comply to the codex astartes but rogel dawn would draft the last wall protocol where he would have all his successors um come to the aid of a centralized authority if they needed it. Either way, the main point is, like we said before, Imperial Fists, they're broken down into OG Imperial Fists, Crimson Fists, the Executioners, which is the chapter master of, um, what's his name, Ran? Fafnir Ran. Fafnir Ran. Fafnir Ran. Fafnir Ran. I actually, I did check, we did commit a lore crime. Uh, executioners are third founding. Oh, of course. He was okay. just soldier because in Crimson Fists. Well, the thing is, Fafnir ran served during the Siege of Terror, so I think, in yeah, my heart, he's the second founding boy. I love Fafnir. He's got it's, a great it's a, it, we'll, we'll leave it as a law crime, I think. <laughs> That's our third These law crime. Happen. But, yeah, so so let me just... Uh, you can confirm this, Eli. So, we've got Imper second founding. We've got Imperial Fist as a progenitor. Then we've got Crimson Fist of the most mm -hmm. youthful, um, most kind of naive of the Imperial Fist. And then we have the Black so. Templars. Who are the most pious? Is there anyone mm -hmm. I'm missing? Soul drinkers, those cool purple guys. Soul drinkers. Oh, of course, right? Yeah, they're a whole other topic. We'll talk about mm -hmm. that. That'll, that'll yeah. have Soul to be its own video. Mm -hmm. Were they? Weren't they? Um, okay. Well, either way. So the Black Templars are formed as a chapter, and they are formed of the absolute most zealous, pious. And let's not forget Sigismund himself when he was on terror met Euphrati Kira, who was a remembrancer, who was the, quote, first living saint of the Imperium, who who worshipped the Emperor as a god and saw him as a divine entity. And Sigismund himself had a clash of conscience where he said to his Primarch Rogel Dawn, um, so I saw two futures where one I would die hopelessly and one I would be a martyr. And I don't really want to, like, attack Horus during this big expedition. I'd rather, like, stay on terror for my own, like, selfish pride, I suppose, and be a martyr. And Primarch Rogel Dawn was like, excuse me, is that religion I smell? And for a while, Rogel Dawn really distrusted Sigismund. He saw him as a, a remnant of a bygone age. However, before the Siege of Terror, he realized... Sigismund is my top boy. He is literally my best warrior. He's literally faultless as far as loyalty is concerned. He should be the, quote, Emperor's Champion. And, of course, Rogel Dawn is stricken with grief at the end of the Siege of Terror. He's literally the one who who carries Sanguinius's dead body 
to Terra after the big big attack on the uh, the Invincible Re- uh, not the Invincible Reason, that's Dark Angels. Vengeful Spirit. The uh, Vengeful Spirit of Horus Lupercal's flagship. He literally carries the angel's body to Terra to be interred within a golden sarf- sarcophagus. And he also observes his gene, his own father, the Emperor of Mankind, interred upon the golden throne. So he's pissed off. And Sigismund shares that anger because he's literally been loyal, he's been true to his cause. And no matter how many champions of chaos he kills, he's still not done enough in the eyes of the Emperor. So Sigismund, unlike all other successor chapter chapter masters, he waits outside of the Eye of Terror. He literally just kind of stays there and watches until one day this guy called Abaddon the Despoiler Boo. comes out of the Eye of Terror. <laughs> yeah. Until this guy called Abaddon the Despoiler comes out the Eye of Terror. And Sigismund's, Sigismund's got a fleet ready and he goes, gotcha. And he goes and attacks them straight away. He boards their vessel, and despite being really good at combat, he's now about a thousand years old. He's waited so long, he's become old. And because of the warps, trickery, and trajectory is messing with time, Abaddon's still pretty much in his prime, plus he's been empowered by Chaos Undivided. So Sigismund and Abaddon duel. It's a really cool fight, but... In the end, Sigismund makes a sacrificial blow where he impales Abaddon the Despoiler through the chest with the Black Sword. But it costs him being literally cleaved in half by the Talon of Horus, the inherited weapon of Abaddon the Despoiler. And he's literally, his legs are cut off, his torso is in one side, his legs are on the other. And Abaddon the Despoiler, very grievously wounded, will survive. But Sigismund deals a blow that he was hoping would be fatal, but isn't. And Do you remember his um his his last words oh, as well? I haven't oh. got a script in front of me. Let me see if I can recite it. I do. It. I, I, think I think I have it right I, here. I think I right, let, 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 let me see. I haven't got a script in front of me. Let me see if I can do it. I'll go do ahead. It I did I if Eli has it as well. Okay, I think. there we go. <laughs> you will die as your weakling father died. Soulless. Honorless. Ashamed. Oh, I've was got him. one of the lines. Yeah, one There's a line between them. But yeah, <laughs> yes. He literally stabs him through the chest. Weeping, I think, it is. Weeping. Weeping. Honorless, weeping. weeping, ashamed. It's yeah. such a... It's... it's. I... I if anyone has um, seen uh, spoilers for some of the uh, books, but um, it's such a fantastic moment of... What I particularly... The, the part, if you are new to Warhammer or if you're an existing fan of Warhammer... There's something about the transformation of Sigismund from this um, just stalwart man who wavers, uh, unfortunately, and then he finds out, like, like we said earlier, the strength. He, he, he becomes renewed when he dawns the black, and he becomes, I think my favorite part when I was um, looking into Sigismund, and you, what you learn about him in the, the book Warhawk, is his the inner transformation of him is the beginning of the black templars and it's mm. something i think it was um it's in his if anyone here has i don't know if it was exactly in his uh fight with khan but the man <laughs> sorry if i'm taking too much but uh it's a it's a fantastic moment if everyone wants to read it and it shows you exactly like his sort of inner transformation and then his kind of venom at the end at abaddon mm. is just so mm. satisfying yeah and and is 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 and to be fair to Abby, to our boy Abby, Abidon, um, he kills Sigismund and he literally puts his body and the black sword into a coffin of sorts and sends it to Holy Terror when he exits the Eye of Terror. And inscribed on the sword, I believe he says, we are coming, which is the dawn <laughs> of the Black Legion. So, yeah, like. Dick a move. huge moment it's in awesome. Warhammer Law. Yeah, huge. and it's like Abaddon. Oh, Dick move killing Sigismund. But at least he had the honor to not be like, I'm just gonna like impale Sigismund's body on the back of my, you know, desecrate him. Pack. Yeah, I'm not gonna desecrate mm. him. I'm not gonna like drag him through the streets of wherever I live, Peckham possibly. It's like no, <laughs> it's like I'm gonna just like I'm gonna send him back respectfully because he attacked me as a warrior and he did a good like. Anyone else impaled Abaddon the Despoiler through the chest with like several inches of the black sword? Deming so. 
<laughs> phrasing. Yes. Gotta, gotta, Very intentional phrasing. Gotta gotta give Evan on credit too. That's probably the most metal way you can give a message if possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, while your... whilst putting a band-aid on your like impaled chest, like, oh I need some I need some painkillers. <laughs> it's truly a it's a worthy he he you can tell it's particularly within the Warhammer setting, like chaos is just it's obviously the bad guys, they are so evil, but to show the amount of respect that Sigismund had earned in his, I guess, a thousand, is he, is he a thousand years old by the end? I think or he's more? about, a, I think it's the 32nd millennium. So he's a, he's close to, if not a thousand years old. So he's not in his prime. He is an old Astartes. He is yeah, his, not... his body has been wrecked yeah. by a thousand years of war and he's still, he's still almost won. And he doesn't and, have, um, go ahead, oh, go ahead. So he doesn't have the chaos power juice, whatever. Keeping him yeah. powerful and young. And he doesn't have he's that, just... that um... the warp steroids. Yeah, <laughs> he's on the roids, boys. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Have you not have like, it under the spoiler? Oh my god! So, he's... so before um, before I continue, um, would someone like to read a quote from the Black Templars? Sure, send us over one. Okay, so um, Colin, you you, I think this is one for you. So Ooh. here is the. From the Library of Devotion. Would you please read this out for us? I would be happy to. Oh, this is a hell of a quote. Very Shakespearean. Go for it. <laughs> when there, where there is uncertainty, I shall bring light. Where there is doubt, I shall sow faith. Where there is shame, I shall point atonement. Where there is rage, I shall show its course. Where my word is the soul, shall be as my bolter in the field. Man, yes, that the is... Library of Devotion. They are pretty... Uh... I get, you can imagine that's probably chanted a thousand mm. times. <laughs> well, it's, you know, it's funny you should mention that because um, the the Emperor's children. Oh, they are supposed to shit. I, I don't know if Oh, no, he, boy, he like gets uh -oh. too excited. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Because here's here's what I was going to say. Um, the Black Templars literally worship the Emperor, somewhat oh, yeah, similar to not only the Emperor's children in that they practically would like go out to to embody the the emperor but also in a similar strange way the word bearers who would literally beseech people and say god is here he's called big e so in a strange way the black templars are like a mix of both the emperor's children mm. and the word bearers and the imperial fist it's a weird Walker conglomeration the horse heresy we were one. I, I, can, one. I can imagine chapter Master Valrak. If he ever watches this, it'll be utterly <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> Bring it on. How compared the Black Templars to, to the well, Lord Bearers the and Emperor's thing. Children. Well, they've got the swords and the shield skills yeah. of the Emperor's Children, and they've got the zealous, like, religious piety and stuff of the Bard. They are literally a conglomeration of the two with a bit of Imperial Fist peppered in. Um, so yeah, I'll fight for it. Me, if, me and Valrak create a clash. We'll, we'll go. If, anyway, if, if you'd like a third dose of heresy, they've got the rage of the world eaters. And they have nice. and without, without it being a cornate thing. Though it's like, yeah. no, it's all about big Bobby G, uh, Bobby G, no Big E. It's like it's all about big Big E, Jimmy <laughs> Space, <laughs> big Jimmy Space. Um, so yes, and and as you say, the 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 Black Templars are experts at melee combat. They love a good sword. They love a good, like, they're not really like axe boys, they're not really chain blade guys, they like a good rigid power sword. Like, here is a sharp blade, stick it in the enemy, yum, yum, yum. But they also, not to the same extent that the Salamanders, love a flamer. And much to the chagrin of Salamanders board game players, they have the new updated flamer model. So there is mm. that as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're, they're a fleet-based chapter. So the interesting thing about the Black Templars in particular is you know how I said about how they kind of bend the rules of the Codex Astartes? They literally bend it into like a unicycle. Like, <laughs> they bend the rules so much. They're like, oh, a thousand Astartes in a chapter. Well, how about our chapters, quote, our crusades? So records vary. Some believe that there are only 6,000 Black Templars. Some believe there's 16,000. Either way, they're taking the piss. And <laughs> the way they get away with it is they say, Hey, Bobby G, Rabute Gilliman, we have a 1,000 Astartes per crusade. So each crusade 
has 1,000 Astartes, let's say they have four Crusades going on at one time, that's 4,000 Astartes, that's four times the manpower of any Codex compliant chapter. And the most conservative estimates suggest that they have more Astartes than the two main non-compliant chapters, which are the Space Wolves and the Grey Knights. Like, literally, feral dog boys or... <laughs> demon killers of the universe like those are who you up against like those guys and you have possibly more than both of them combined that's a big chapter to be fair, to be fair as well though it, so in a way you're more likely as a imperial citizen on any world to meet like you're you're, yeah. you're probably it, the to to say meeting an Astartes is rare within the oh. Warhammer universe. We're talking about, you know, was it a million worlds with, mm. I think, with at the estimation of people. Yeah, with trillions of people. The the absolute rarity, they, they are truly the Emperor's angels in terms of they are, it is like seeing an angel. They're literally like on the posters pointing going, I want you to kill Xenos. Like they mm. are the poster boys because they're the most numerous. <laughs> the, the, the idea of it being... The, it, the most likely chaps, the most likely emperor's angel that you'll ever meet is this enormous, you know, dawned in black armor, just utterly, extremely zealous mm. marine that is just, mm. I am, I am utterly, you know, the emperor is in fact a god. I am completely yeah. devoted. And guy I am. He's literally like, Have you prayed five times today to the well, emperor of mankind? No. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to get stabbed. Yeah. 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 I've reserved a bolt shell just for you, <laughs> heretic. And and the thing is that the, ze the zealousy does get in the way to an extent. Like to give you an idea, like we we all know about the Death Watch. So the Death Watch is the 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 kill teams of the Ordo Hereticus, which specifically go out into the universe to destroy aliens, and they draft Astartes from every chapter of the Adeptus Astartes. And whilst the Black Templars are very very reputable and good warriors they don't get on well with other astartes to the most extent like we, we've all seen hell's reach i'm assuming yes fantastic well, animation there's a great scene where the the black templars under merrick grimaldus meet with the salamanders who are literally polar op opposites it's like here you have the most like dogmatic zealous bigoted legion arguably mm -hmm. like i think if yes yeah, the best way the to most... the best way to encompass that i think if you are i guess new or i say i say a big fan of warhammer already i think the best way you can encompass them is they are like uh warrior bigots <laughs> in, in their sort of <laughs> warrior bigots fighting for humanity and they're uh, literally yeah. having a discussion amongst themselves of like the salamanders they're saving civilians madness it was like yes yeah, the nicest <laughs> legion with the most like quote unquote evil legion of the astart although i think people say that as a meme but i feel like uh what they called the um marines malevolent marines They're... malevolent are worse Oof. Much i worse. love you dread anon if you're watching this i love you <laughs> we love you dread anon we love you um but yeah so basically yeah they they don't get on well with like librarians in the death watch they don't get on well with a lot of things but they are very good warriors um they used to and here's the here's the interesting thing when the uh the black Templars were founded they did have librarians but over time they've just sort of disappeared <laughs> and no one can exactly point out why but one of the reasons that's pointed to is that um when the emperor of mankind said hey edict of nikea no psychers when Black Templar historians look over the past, they've seen that and they've said, oh, that's a holy edict. That's literally our god saying you cannot have psychers in the Codex Astartes or in the Legion, Legiones Astartes. Therefore, God has literally told us no librarians. And that's one possible reason. Mm. But yes, so, so they don't like, they don't have any... To give you an idea of how zealous the Black Templars are, tech marines of the chapter traditionally in the codex of Stardis, they paint their armor red with like a with with a with a with an arm or a, or a, or a, or a van brace or a shoulder guard depicting their their chapter so they'll be painted all red with like an ultramarine's pauldron for example the machine spirits of the black templars are so zealous if you paint it too red 
it won't work. <laughs> the armor will literally say that's mm, that's heresy, and it will literally not function if you paint too much of it, not in the colors of the Black Templars. That's the that's like the kind of the thing that makes Warhammer almost so unique is because of for the, if you are new the the warp itself that kind of mirror dimension of madness the the, the sentient thought realm that lies. I guess side by side with uh, our own, its belief manifests within Warhammer. So the Black Templars almost like when we when we speak of machine spirits, we literally think the actual machine. The Black Templars believe so zealously in I guess the purity of their own armor that it therefore to to color it is therefore almost like heretical. It's, it's on the edge of heretical. And it manifests within the universe, like the like you said, the armor may not work, which is insane. It's almost it's un, unbearably insane. Well, I I have a quote that might be uh, good for that. Uh, Colin, do you want to read this one as well with your sultry voice? Oh, why not? Man, all of the Black Templar quotes are just metal. <laughs> uh, any metal. <laughs> anyway. As our bodies are armored with adamantium, our souls are protected with loyalty. As our bolters are charged with death for the emperor's enemies, our thoughts are charged with wisdom. As our ranks advance, so does our devotion. For are we not space marines? Are we not the chosen of the emperor, his loyal servants unto death? This makes me think back of what I would narrate church plays. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the tone was a bit different. <laughs> the, tone, the tone was a yeah, little bit yeah. more... Uh, <laughs> forgiveness and <laughs> for, yeah, that kind of thing. <laughs> but, um, just thinking, Eli, do you want to read this one as well? As you wish to, to get through. Where there is uncertainty, I shall bring light. Where there is doubt, I shall sow faith. Where there is shame, I shall point atonement. Where there is rage, I shall show its course. My word in, in the soul shall be as my bolter in the field. In the I think we read that one already. Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> double double serving frankly. double down on the on the uh on the uh devotion now how is a black templars chapter divided well before we get to that let's just say the battle cry is no fear no pity no remorse they are a fleet-based chapter so unlike most chapters of the adeptus astartes they do not have a home world they literally live on their main ship and their main ship is an interesting one because it is called the eternal crusader now uh for anyone who enjoys primarchs i think that's all of us yeah yeah <laughs> pretty fans. much everyone yeah, who doesn't every one of the 20 primarchs was gifted a gloriana class battleship the only things bigger than this are the abyssal ships from the emperor's children and the emperor's own flagship and the phalanx so like these are pretty much with a couple of exceptions the biggest void ships in the imperium and there was one or two depending on the legion for every primarch now when the emperor found rogel dawn on his homeworld of inwit he met rogel dawn and rogel dawn was like bruh i've already got this massive pre-imperium ship called the phalanx or phalanx and this ship is massive so massive that to this day the imperial fists use it as their base of operations so like the phalanx is arguably the biggest ship in the imperium so in that regard rogel dawn was like hmm i've already got a flagship i've got these successor chapters i love you siggy here's my gloriana class flagship so the other than the ultramarines who have the mccrag's honor which is rebute gilliman the primarch rebute gilliman's flagship the only legion not legion the only chapter who has a gloriana class battleship in service in the current day 41st millennium is the black templars they literally have a joint first, well joint second biggest warship in the imperium plus a bunch of bonus ships just in case they need them so this kind of makes sense later on but like would you like to hear some of the names of the other ships they have under their sway is it gonna scar my dreams <laughs> <laughs> if it go so. go for it go for it i want right, to hear so, this so, okay so here's one one of their biggest like these are kind of like their biggest ships other than the eternal crusader so number one 
abhorrence. Well, just that? Just oh, abhorrence. That, that's Jesus it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, Another one? Revenant. Light oh. of Purity. Hammer of War. Divine Fury. And this one's quite nice. Uh, they also had a ship called Blade of the Seventh Sun. I'm not sure if that's an Iron Maiden reference, but Blade of the Seventh Sun, the Black Templars had as like a strike cruiser. And when they helped the Celestial Lines during the aftermath of the Third War of Armageddon and the Celestial Lines were decimated, which are also a successor chapter of the Imperial Fist, they were like, bro, you can have this ship as your flagship. And then that's now... I think it's still in operation. That's now the Celestial Alliance flagship. So that's kind of nice that, like, even though they're, like, xenophobic, murderous, nasty boys, they still have some kindness in a way. Well, their they're honor, I would say honor, wouldn't yeah. they? They have honor for their brothers in a sort of, um, yeah, yeah, that sort of respect between fellow warriors of the Imperium, but everyone else can get shafted, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so to give you an idea of, of how uh, they're, they're organized, so every company is formed into fighting companies. Uh, so to give you an example, every fighting company is given a unique name. Uh, in current eras, for example, fighting company under the Castellan Brocus is called The Righteous. Fighting company after Bardolf is Bearers of the Sacred Bones. And they have a... They, they they vary slightly, but for example, the Righteous, you have a Castellan, a Banner Bearer, Tech Marine, Apothecary, some Initiates, some Neophytes, Intercessors, Land Raiders, Predator Tanks, Destructors, Repulsors, Razorbacks, Rhinos, Dreadnoughts. So every company has a few armored vehicles, it has some specialists, and it has a bunch of Astartes. Now, you also have, um, for example... Uh, the training world. So the, the the Black Templars go through a lot of Astartes. That's more than understatement, most. almost. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh my like, god. They're, they're the they're they're probably probably they're definitely the biggest chapter. Like they've got so many Astartes, and they yeah. put them through the meat grinder. Uh, and so unlike because they're a fleet based chapter, they don't have just like a world like like the Blood Angels have Baal, the Space Wolves have Fenris. They don't just have like a world where they just go go back to this home world and get them. So they have training worlds. And so when they conquer a world, they appoint a, a castellan, which is the equivalent of like a captain of the chapter, to to keep and ward over the keep that they build on the, the, the conquered worlds. And they recruit from there. And to give you an idea, the, the training worlds that we have on record are Arborosa 4, Cloister, from Pokemon, um, <laughs> oh my God. Fergax, Killhaven. I like the sound of that. Nice. Lilia Mundi, Pergacious Free, and Solemnus. And here's the thing, though. Like when I when I when I was reading up about the the Black Templars, it, I've never really found like um very sufficient reason why this makes sense. But according to what I've read, they only selectively recruit. So. Maybe it's just because they have so many worlds, but according to what I've read with sources, they literally have aspirants compete to be the new Black Templars, and then they only pick a select few of them. So from records, it says we own the Black Templars are like we only recruit a couple of initiates a year. I'm like you, you churn through a lot of Templars. Like how? Can, I would how, how, I would surmise that because when we say like. When we talk about Astartes within Warhammer, we forget how they are utterly like the, they are literally the one in the million mm -hmm. in terms of yeah, and it's it's always you know the amount of the absolute tragedy of when even just one dies is because the amount of resources and training and they literally have a million wells yeah, yeah like, I suppose and so. well, it's also yeah a million if you have over a million you know the Imperium the vastness of it and you know a million worlds they can almost afford to be that selective because the you can imagine like just to live up to for each neophyte joining this you know this legion i guess it's almost like a legion at this point is there well, this mm -hmm. chapter they have to they are essentially embodying who sigismund you know all the way back to the beginning of them they are trying to embody that level of superhuman you know not necessarily superhuman but that level of the cut above the rest 
and so therefore i could i could imagine why the uh, selection process is so just i guess short and it's so um mm. hard to get in because you you really you really need the you're, you're trying to make you know the greatest the most zealous the most you know tactically gifted i can imagine that they being want, you know go ahead so go ahead they want the cream of the cream of the crop if there's any sign of weakness you are you are not allowed into the black templar club I imagine they probably kill the other recruits too who don't make it. I cause it, it's Warhammer. I don't know if that's true, but it, it's I don't Warhammer. know. I've not heard anything. It's not like Iron Hands where it's like you're a servitor now. But like I, maybe I'm not sure. I feel like it would be a, too much of a waste. I, they probably become like serfs because like l learning of like uh, is it Caleb Aaron who's in the Death Guard during the Horus Heresy? He fails to be a Death Guard, so he becomes a chapter serf and he becomes Nathaniel Garrow's mm -hmm. um like uh his ward, not, kind of his ward where he, he, he yeah he's like he looks after his weapons and stuff i don't know about that Armor. in regards to the, uh, the black templars but like yeah maybe uh all i do know is that every recruit in the aspirants that exceeds they have to be approved by the keeps castellan and the chaplains and the apothecary so they're like okay are they faithful enough are they healthy enough and do they have the fighting spirit and then every aspirant who becomes a part of the black templars becomes a neophyte and there's a weird ranking structure with the black templars because here's how it goes so neophytes they're the novices they're untrained their pauldrons are blank white with the uh the the heraldic cross that's all they have every neophyte is mentored by a battle brother of the black templars so they go into battle as a pair and the 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 so-called initiates, the rank and file of the Black Templars, tutor them and mentor them in battle. Now, if a neophyte dies during the trying, the the initiate, the the mentor, will avenge his death or die trying. And if the initiate, aka the mentor, dies, then the neophyte will be tutored by another initiate, but will also strive to re avenge his his mentor so there is like there's an interesting thing with the black templars where when they make squads they're not divined by a captain they literally form bands of like friends or comrades and they like they go i like to fight with say say let's say we were black templars and i was like oh i want to fight with eli and colin and hal i'll go and join them that's how they decide how to do it. They don't have overarching structures. They go, I like to fight with so-and-so, and they form like a band of brothers from that, which is quite interesting as a, as a, an Astartes legion, uh, chapter. It makes, it's quite interesting. Um, yeah, so go ahead, Colin. So it makes me think of the first year of high school going, where am I going to sit? <laughs> where am I going to sit at lunch? Where am I going to sit? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, the sorry. poor new guys in the Black Templars like, who are my friends? Who do I, what's my click? <laughs> <laughs> do I have to stop? Where's my new slang? <laughs> to start fitting in as quickly as possible. <laughs> well, the other interesting thing about the, the Black Templars is they have no sergeants. They do not have anyone in charge of each squad because they, they function as a cohesive whole. Um, the only promotion from neophyte to initiate is sword brethren. And Sword Brethren is basically the first company. We're talking about the elite company, the first company, the best of the best. Every Crusader host obviously has their Sword Brethren, but it's a very high honor. Like, for example, uh, Reclusiarch Grimaldus of the Black Templars was the youngest ever Astartes to ascend to become a member of the Sword Brethren. But other than that, the only rank after that is Castellans, which are the equivalent of captains or company leaders. And they lead the the uh, the 100 strong, 10 different squads per crusade host. So if you have, uh, say, um, a, a thousand Astartes in a crusade, the Castellans, there's 10 of them. They lead 100 Astartes each in the battle companies, and they're led by the marshals. Now, the marshals are in charge of each crusade. Buck stops at the marshal. I'm leading a crusade. Shut up. I'm in charge. That's the marshals. And in charge of all of them is the high marshal. Sigismund, who we spoke of earlier, was the first high marshal, which is the equivalent of chapter master, of the Black Templars. Other than that, you obviously have your chaplains, your uh, reclusiarch, who is the high, high chaplain. 
tech marines and apothecaries of the legion are we all following that's all not I too bad they, i had an interesting thought about when you mentioned how they they the idea of them being paired up with um other members because that's obviously in warhammer that's actually quite a large that's a large divergence you know almost <laughs> heretical divergence from the codex of Startes. and the interesting part of that is i wonder if that plays into the idea of that when i guess they they, they bond them in this way to each other so that when one dies there's almost like a like a like a level of revenge well yeah kind of i mean like just just, just the neophytes the initiate there's literally records of like a mentor dying and his initiate going on his own like mini crusade to kill the orc who killed his mentor or whoever it's like there there is more than any astartes vision i can think of there are bonds of brotherhood which like meld the chapter and make them really strong I can't it's kind of, it's kind, of, of it's kind of redeeming a little bit yeah about them. but also you can yeah, see how it plays into like their zealotry because there's nothing more i guess rage inducing than to <laughs> see to see someone you know a, a, a brother you know brother a brother die <laughs> on the field i can imagine that it's like their own the structure of their own chapter is designed to increase their own zealotry which is frightening well, <laughs> yeah. speaking of zealotry uh, Eli, would you like to read this quote for me, please? Yes, sir. Let a wave of repugnance from the enemy wash over you. Let hatred fill you. Hate is good, for our goal is a human galaxy. We are called by the Emperor with a sacred duty to conquer it in his name. From so Mr. That, Grimaldus. That's our boy Grimaldus himself. Like, yeah, he's like, yeah, it's just let, about us. What's it? What's that thing from where it says "Let the hate flow"? It kind of <laughs> Star <flows>. Wars. <laughs> it definitely touches upon that idea. I think it's it's almost because um the part I always loved. If you are into Warhammer, like just as like a if you're someone who's a big I guess expert fan of the Black Templars, you'll kind of you'll see how this within the forty first millennium, the idea of the the grim dark setting is that it's a perversion and it's a kind of humanity is very much at its worst like we're all pretty much i guess in agreement that humanity in the 41st millennium mm -hmm. sucks oh the awful. thing is I, I i love how even in that that context you get people like sigismund who like yes he's an angry boy but you know that thing where it's like harsh times make heroic people in a weird way there are elements you see in the characters of Warhammer 40k where you go, oh, they're like from a deplorable chapter and blah, blah, blah. And yet they have qualities which are really admirable. Mm -hmm. You go, they're loyal. They are like courageous. They are so. And, th and that's the weird thing about 40k, I suppose, where you go, wow, this character is really cool and likable. Ah, but they live in 40k. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. The, you understand what I, I mean? think, um, I think the interesting part of it is the black. I guess it's the way I've always viewed it, and I can sometimes see why. If you ever spoke to someone who is a like a huge fan of Black Templars, they're kind of they've become the warriors that this disgusting uh, modern timeline needs them to be. Because mm. when you are truly facing against, when when we say the word nightmare, like I don't think that even like no. the the word nightmare doesn't it doesn't oh, oh, we can't register how awful. Like the tyranny, the tyranny. Uh, like, even like chaos as well. Poor, you know, good mm. old Eli with his chaos. <laughs> you disgusting you both man. like Empress. You guys, I know your game. No, no, no. <laughs> Eli, you're too nice to like Empress children. <laughs> you're too nice, man. That's um, what I've been told a lot of times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Canadian sensibilities. Uh, but uh -huh. I think, I think I like the idea of them being. They are when you're like fight it's why the idea of like sigismund fighting khan is so almost poetic is because the, the 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 beautiful i guess for me the beautiful thing about uh the siege of terror in particular itself is that i i cannot for the life of i, I try to remember khan's famous large words to sigismund i think it was i'm not as broken as you yeah. because yeah, i think it was that is, the other day yeah that's exactly it it's a it's a fantastic line because it shows you like even my point is will be about how the modern day black templars have changed but the the idea is that sigismund himself was you know 200 years on the great crusade and his you know in his good old yellow armor 
and he was kind of a stalwart man. And then when we reach the end of the Siege of Terror, he is just this he he is he's become so hateful that he turned into something where he was almost apathetic towards mm, the end. It was definitely. it what it's um I don't know what's it's like the uh he reaches like that Zen moment in um what's the uh Siege of Terror book? Is it War Warhawk? Warhawk. Yeah, he and, scares um, Karn. Karn is like worried about him and <laughs> It's a, it's a, such an interesting um, part for if you are a fan of the Black Templars, you can kind of see how the 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 hate hate is almost like again like many things in politics itself. It's like a cycle, mm -hmm. and it comes all the way back round. And then so, Sigismund, I was saying, I will speak about the Wild Eaters in a second, but continue what you're saying. Oh yeah, say so, uh, Sigismund, he becomes so hateful that it turns into cold apathy where that cold apathy is almost it is it is where the it's the beginning of the corruption of the uh imperium because it's it's a it's a corruption where it lies in i'm apathetic to these people and it's based on a, this is the beginning of i guess the religious sense of mm. it not that always that is evil but it's that nice twist where they they he sigismund doesn't hate at one some point chaos because they are so far beneath him because he is so zealous, because he is so zealous that he mm. cannot hate something so minuscule, and it's like a, it's a nice contrast to see the mm. the modern Templars, which are almost like they're not quite at his level yet, but they're like they're, they're on get, that. They're path. getting there. It makes me. Mm. Think, Ryan. Oh, sorry, Colin, you go. I go have, ahead, Colin. Okay, this is a really. Uh, it's an anime <laughs> comparison. I, I, oh my I, god! Uh, it's, it's, Ra it's Dragon Ball. It's Dragon Ball. It's Dragon Ball. I made a nice speech. I made a fantastic speech there. Like, you did. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to follow with this. It's, it's Dragon Ball. If that helps. No, do it. Do it. Uh, it's in one of the newer movies. Do you have? Okay, so you know F Vegeta. The I don't Hell know yeah. how much. Yeah, it's Vegeta and then Frieza. Mm -hmm. It's in the what movie where Frieza comes back. Frieza is just yeah. trash talking him as he always does. And usually Vegeta is, he man tr trash talks so hard he dies, and he'll still call you from beyond the grave to call you a coward. I think I permanently hear like Kakarot. In my head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but in that movie, Frieza keeps trash talking him, and Vegeta he's just so angry that he he doesn't say anything. He just beats the snot out of him. Like I know, I'm oh, sorry, yeah. sorry oh, to follow a, that comparison up with <laughs> an anime. I think that crystallizes it perfectly. Uh, it's but, a that's that's the level I think, at least for me, that's I've always seen them. It's why they're almost the, the Black Templars are like so they are the warriors you need them to be at the right time. Mm -hmm. But they are they there is something deeply dark and scary about them. Yeah, which, yeah. The, that intimidation only adds to the the badassery. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. I can see why good old chapter master yeah. Valarak shouting. <laughs> I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. So, yeah, so, yeah, I can understand why. <laughs> He enjoyed it so much. The, the, the cold rage made me th made me think of that. My my apologies. For... <laughs> no, 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 no. Do, you guys, do you guys agree? Like, do you think um I might might be like talking way off? I might be, like, no, I think you're pretty much on it. He, like he loses himself, kind of. Yeah. yeah almost in the siege. Unhuman. It's mm -hmm. you know to be to be human is to be uh in in touch with your emotions, and then he just becomes a thing. Uh, he literally is a weapon. He's not. Mm -hmm. he, that, it's that's why he's almost i i was what's the words of khan again it says i'm not as broken as you mm -hmm. or i'm not as damaged as you and i think that perfectly is a you know it you know warhammer law is fantastic and i think that's you know a fantastic well, on, piece of writing well on that note uh colin would you do me the honor of reading this this quote oh i see why you threw that one to me <laughs> <laughs> i see the first two words oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kill aliens and warp spawn filth wherever you find them and whatever circumstances you find them. There is no such thing as tolerance for such as them as far as the Emperor is concerned. From High Marshal Gerald. Ooh. The prayer of repugnance. Because <laughs> <laughs> the thing, I was, I was reading that awesome. quote and you're like, yeah, he's kind of detached and he's just like honed in. And, and the thing was, Hal, you mentioned about like the, uh, the World Eaters and Khan. Well, here's a fun fact about the Black Templars. Um, the Black Templars have a bunch of relics and traditions, and a couple of them are chain related. Calm down. So, <laughs> so for example, it's just chains back in this box. <laughs> well, for example, number one, they have these things called chains of devotion. So when they go into battle, they have chains attached to their bolters and swords and weapons, 
and they literally bind their weapons to their hands so they can't drop them. And this was originally a custom from the World Eaters when Sigismund used to duel Khan and his friends in the fighting pits on the Conqueror, the Gloriana class flagship of the World Eaters. And there's also a chain called the Chain of Zeal. And the Chain of Zeal is interesting because it's literally welded to an armored like greave or glove. So the person who is given the quote honor of the chain of zeal physically can't take their their like combat gloves off because it's welded to their weapon and there is massive shame if you ever remove it so like imagine you go to bed one night and you're like i'm i'm in a start i only need to like sleep once a week but still you're like i'll take off my armor it's a bit heavy but I can't take my glove off because it's literally bolted to my heavy bolter. <laughs> oh, well, I'll <laughs> just like, I'm going to lie on bed with my heavy bolter on my chest because it's welded to me. <laughs> stuffy. Just in case someone tries oh, to like God. attack me in my sleep. So they are literally always armed. The, the um, idea of the fact that we just spoke about this incredibly dark and zealous like inner journey and then the fact that there are these, <laughs> there are these guys who can't take their gloves off when they sleep. Yeah, they're literally like, <laughs> oh, you're always on the God. clock. Snuggling um, their bolters. Just, that is like, I just, in my head, I just picked that being like, just the mild, the, the mild inconvenience being like, <laughs> yes, this makes me more zealous to the emperor because of the mild <laughs> inconvenience. <laughs> Imagine trying to go to bed and you're literally linked to a chain sword. Like, how does that work? Oh, every Thursday. Yeah. Not... <laughs> so, <laughs> prick myself. I rolled over in bed and now stabbed myself in the leg. God damn it. You know, like, <laughs> that just seems really impractical. Um, <laughs> but yes. Um, so would you like to know about some more relics of the chapter? Uh, tell us straight away. Ooh. We need to, we need to know. But we, okay. we cannot sleep without these relics. I want more metal names. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there, I've I've picked a few. I haven't picked all of them, but I've I've picked a few. So, for example, there is a trefold artificer armor set. That the Black Templars have. There's the armor of the fearless crusader. There's the mm. armor of the pitiless crusader. And there's the armor of the remorseless crusader, which they tithed to the Death Watch. So any Black Templars who serve in the Death Watch, they have exclusive ar access to Artificer armor, which is a pretty neat deal. If you're like, ah, I'm being sent to like the equivalent of Astartes boarding school, you still get a really neat set of armor. So that's quite nice. Um, let's talk about uh, they had. They, hmm, how do I explain this? So they they have a relic called the Holy Orb of Antioch. Oh my god. I think I know How? This Would you going. like to explain the reference, please? Because I think you know. Oh my god. Um... <laughs> okay. Uh, well, is anyone here? So for the rest of you guys who do not feel... So for our viewers watching, uh, me and Andy are definitely on the different side of the Atlantic. And this is, <laughs> this is a reference to a group called Monty Python. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> and uh, there's a fantastic movie. Oh my god, I've forgotten the name of it for a second there. Oh, I've got it's Grail. the Holy, Holy Grail. Grail. Holy Grail. No. Yeah, hey, oh thank god, everyone's watched this. I watched that yeah. movie way too young. And uh, <laughs> this is a fantastic reference to a Monty Python sketch within this film about uh, the Holy Hand Grenade, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> and correct. they are trying to kill... <laughs> was a it rabbit. like a, 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 bunny. Uh, an demon albino, a demon albino rabbit that mm -hmm. takes on crusaders which is to it the idea of that being recreated in warhammer that that shows you why you should be into this <laughs> i think it's a board game item as well so you can literally use it in the yeah game. oh is it really <laughs> i bet it is so, i, I can look right I now think... If I'm correct, it's like it hurts you more if you do a bad dice roll and it hurts you. It's like <laughs> if you're not pious enough, it hurts you. Something like that. So if you throw um, it at, at a Xeno's demon they're just, or a Chaos demon, they're just screwed. Yeah, basically. <laughs> um, but I, I love that. that that's, it's a little. I think there's another Monty Python reference with the Black Templars, but I couldn't find it. But I'm sure there's another one. Because um, again, English company, etc. Um, another thing they have is the Sword of Dawn. So, in the Eternal Crusader, they literally have a hall of records which basically talks about all their greatest deeds, blah, blah, blah. But they also have this massive vault of relics. And one of those relics is the Sword of Dawn. I believe it's the Chain Sword of Dawn. I might be mistaken. But it, I think it's literally the sword that you see in all the pictures with the chain blade and blah, blah, blah. And it's broken. But the interesting thing 
is the the chapter when they elect a high marshal they give them a weapon called the high marsh the sword of the high marshals and it's forged from the broken fragments or some of the broken fragments from dawn's personal sword so that's kind of cool um and it's literally used as a badge of yeah it's like a badge of office for the um the the high marshal um so before we do the notable members and the emperor's champion of the uh the black templars i'd like to uh quickly just go through i think it'd be good if we all read one of the various there's four main oaths that sigismund said to vow to do and every black templar has to swear this when they go on to the eternal crusader so every few years they go back to the eternal crusader they go back to the quote home ship and they have to recite these vows in order to remain a black templar so uh i will um i will start with the uh the abhor the witch quote i feel like we're joining so, the black templars so you yeah. are trying the to black make us sneakily are. join in so i'll recite this one i did it in my black templars but still so here we go <clears throat> smite now the scions of the witch grant us the strength to pierce their unclean flesh to cover their fields with the pale forms of their blasphemous dead to drown the thunder of guns with the shrieks of their dying to lay waste to their citadels with hurricanes of fire to wring the hearts of their kin with unavailing grief to send them into the wastes of their desolated lands in rags and hunger broken in spirit worn with travail and begging for the refuge of the grave we ask it in the spirit of wrath o master of mankind and that's abhor the witch destroy the witch by the black templars damn nice. not inviting them for christmas no. <laughs> <laughs> all right colin here's your one Bump. you don't have to do the uh the epic voice if you don't want to <laughs> my, my narrative my epic narrative voice is a bit rusty so yeah <laughs> We I'll do my <laughs> yeah. We, we can't compete. It's I know. Bad down to Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Trust in the Emperor at the hour of battle. Trust him to intercede and protect his warriors true as they deal death on alien soil. Turn their seas to red with the blood of their slain. Crush their hopes, their dreams, and turn their songs into cries of lamentation. That's so awesome. It makes me think That's of Conan. Conan. The honor of the Emperor. <laughs> Conan the Barbarian. It's like hear the lamentations of their women. <laughs> I feel like I feel like I might be. This might be hitting me differently. I have to say. <laughs> well, here's yours, Eli. This one is called "Accept Any Challenge, No Matter oh. the Odds." Let's see here. Yeah, okay. Oh, Emperor in wrath, rejoicing at bloody wars, fierce and untamed, whose mighty power doth make the strongest walls from their foundation's sake, all conquering master of mankind. Be pleased with his war's tumultuous roar, delight in swords and fists red with alien blood, and the dire ruin of savage battle. Rejoice in furious challenge and avenging strife, whose works with woe embitter human life. Accept Very any nice. challenge no matter the odds. Beautiful. I feel like they're becoming more evil as we continue. <laughs> <laughs> more and epic, you mean? I won't, I won't do a... Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure I can compete. People... <laughs> okay. Lead us from death to victory, from falsehood to truth. Lead us from despair to hope, from faith to slaughter. Lead us to his strength and an eternity of war. Let his wrath fill our hearts. Death, war and blood. In vengeance serve the Emperor. In the name of dawn, suffer not the unclean to live. Oh, hey! a little bit, bit harder oh, towards the end there. It's there so go. awesome. I like that. That was good. <clears throat> I'm not actually a voice actor, so please, <laughs> no, please, man. please be kind if anyone comments. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was nice. And, and yeah, mentioned in that last, uh, I think it was Eli's bit, where it's like, you know, it's worth noting that like the Black Templars have literally been at war for 10,000 years. Uh, I don't think I mentioned this before. They literally were like, oh, Great Crusade was pretty cool. So now they're like, we can one-up that. We're going to like launch a crusade that lasts forever. And so far, 
It's not been broken in 10,000 years. Yeah, that the, long, the longest human war in history, you could Ever. say. Mm -hmm. the, long, the longest war in human history. It's almost frightening, damn. <laughs> 10,000 mm. years. Okay, um, so uh, we're, we're pretty much, we're already at an hour and a bit. Um, so I think we should wrap this up with some of the most notable people in the Black Templars, if you're happy with that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. Okay, so... Let's start off with, um, we've already mentioned Sigismund, so we, we've kind of already talked about him. Uh, mm. But let's just say that he, all we'll add to him is that he is revered so much that there is literally a temple in the, um, uh, in the Eternal Crusader alongside Dawn and the Emperor. Like, the trifecta for the Eternal Crusader and the Black Templars is literally the God of Man, Gene Father of Man, and the best warrior, literally like the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Like literally, mm. that is the Black Templars to a T. And although the Black Sword, his weapon of choice, was kind of vandalized by Abaddon saying, uh, is it we are coming or we are mm. we're on the way? Uh oh, here comes the Black Legion, whatever it was. Um, they kind of scribbled that off and they still retain his sword on the Eternal Crusader, which we'll get back to in a minute. Now we're about to talk about one of the biggest chads in Warhammer 40k. Are you ready? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. ready. Hit me. Eldred. Okay. <laughs> no, <laughs> okay. Back in your um, corner, Scum. We're not, we're not talking about those baby Eldar Apologies. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> okay, so, so we're going to talk about <clears throat> High Marshal Helbrecht. Now, Ooh. this guy, to give you an idea of how important High Marshal Helbrecht is, if you read the ninth edition of the Adeptus Custodes Codex, there is a quote, and I'm about to read it to you. And the quote is called Deeds of Legend by Gration Artabane, who's a Custodes. Um, a man with an unreasonable name. Yeah, I think it's great, <laughs> Gration or Gratarion Artabane. Gration, um, I think. Gration, yeah, I think it is, yeah. And the quote reads, <clears throat> For 60 and 3 years, did I serve as companion, the youngest to ever hold such a position, and thus be named Honoured Watchman. So long in his presence, there is not enough gratitude in all the galaxy I could have for the privilege of such a duty. Alas, as with all of the Haterion Guard, I could not stand watch over the throne for eternity. I had not the strength. Eventually, I will return and serve longer, as I swear. The Aquilan shield was my calling when I left the throne, for if I could not protect the Emperor himself, I would guard those doing his works. I read the Lictoran rites, took the Ravarangian oaths, and passed the Baltagic trials. I spent three decades learning of the Doomscryers, how to interpret their words, what to dismiss as babble, and what to accept as truth. I learned of past error, as well as successful protection of my order. Here's the important bit. <laughs> my first duty while bedecked in the purpuran shades of my host was to shield a denizen of piety, one who was barely adolescent. In the underhives in which he dealt, we preserved his life from afar until the day the Black Templars came and took him aboard their ships. That boy's name was Helbrecht. Literally, the Aquilan Shield, the guys whose whole job is to look out for important people to preserve humanity, found Helbrecht when he was an adolescent mm. and protected him because he was important. The actual nice. like, importance of that is almost... To say like earth-shattering is not enough, almost. Like, galaxy. The implications of the trusted of the Emperor, you know, the custodians yeah. to watch over a single, you know... In a universe of trillions of people to watch over one person. And so like, that boy. With just how goddamn important. I'm sorry. Shit. Is that a bad <laughs> word? <laughs> no, no, go for uh, it's fine. But is it just how important he's going to be? Like, if the custodians themselves are like, you, I cannot tell you how important. You're so important. We're leaving the emperor to guard you. That is a mm. whole new level of, like, worth, like, worth as a future space marine, as a person. I wish the Emperor spoke to me like that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, are, well, you are so important. I can use the pep talk. <laughs> well, 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 they say, this is, a, this is a Black Templar belief, but it might be true. 
that the high marshals of the chapter are literally appointed by the emperor himself. And so this kind of bears credence that it might just be a coincidence. It's just like he's too he's too important to ignore, but like it bears credence. But mm -hmm. Helbrecht, the man himself, what's Helbrecht's deal? Helbrecht is literally the greatest naval commander in the Imperium. Right? We all love uh, Hell's Reach. Mm -hmm. A lot yeah. of people, when they watch that fan film or read the book, they think, oh, H Hell's Reach, Armageddon, that was just like the Black Templars. Like, no. Like, there was dozens, dozens of Astartes companies and chapters that were appointed to defend Hell's Reach. Like, there's literally like a bunch of chapters you've never heard of there's so many chapters on that warfare and they all got to armageddon flagships and ships and who was in charge of all the astartes war fleet hellbricked they literally went you are literally the best naval commander in the imperium you do it and he he is he he's also an amazing swordsman this guy jeweled necron stormlord Imotech. Like one of the most big daddy Necron energy guys ever. Literally a and Terminator he's... that doesn't slow down or tire. And here's the thing. <laughs> the only... And and I this is why I don't like Necron. Bear with me. Like <laughs> Hellbrecht messed him up again and again and again and again and again for ages. And the only reason that Imotech one was because he kept regenerating and was like, ha, lol, and cut his hand off. It's like, mm, I don't like Necron. Like, at least have like a limit of how much you can regenerate. Come <laughs> I mean, on. You, could just get, you could just get good. You, know? yeah. <laughs> you could get good. Oh, I mean, that is it's the interesting part of it being, I think it's a, the, the, the part I loved about this within the law is like, it's a representation of, it is a bit of a microcosm between human struggle because human the, the even as you know as mighty as Helbrecht and how talented and how strong he is he is only he, he is the human whose muscles tire who's you know eventually he will i think it's a, it's a nice kind of uh link to how i guess our story humanity story will be with the necrons in the future mm. it's a nice although i think it's almost i think it's an advantage that it's almost frustrating that 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 duel happens as as epic as it is, as a yeah as epic as it is. Well, I bet you um, he would have won if he was an ultramarine. Yeah. Oh god. Here we go. Although to be fair, <laughs> Marnie's Calgar got dunked on by Abaddon, so mm. their Although, pl their plot that, armor has been fading. Nice. Although t to be fair, Helbrecht lost that fight and such before he undertook the rubric on primaris and now he is a primaris marine so round, round two may be different now, now he's daddy helbrecht is bigger and better now he's, he's a, mm, a weapon to surpass boy. metal gear now <laughs> exactly he is he metal ha, he, gear rex he's upgraded he has maidens now he's, <laughs> he's got the sword cleaner guy <laughs> the oh yeah have no maidens now he has maidens <laughs> oh, I, wanted, I wanted to say earlier eli if, if, if you fail the black templar trials you're the sword cleaner <laughs> the sword guy <laughs> <laughs> nice. did you know that his his um in the tabletop his little like uh, surfs actually can hit people. Yeah, really? yeah. I was just looking at the rules. They get two extra like, attacks, at, like strength with, three, with AP what? zero. Like, like with quick. Their hands. It literally like, says their hands. Like, what are they hitting with? Like just like insults. Like, what, what <laughs> punch good them. They? they just. It's like off. Sword cleaner has punched you. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, by the way, uh, Eli, would you like to? I'm about to talk about everyone's favorite Templar, Grimaldus. Would you like mm -hmm. to read uh, a quote before I talk about him? But of course. To the darkness I bring fire, to the ignorant I bring faith. Those who welcome these gifts may live, but I will visit naught but death and eternal damnation on those who refuse them. So nice. The problem with Eli saying that, it sounds too nice. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you, sound, you sound too wholesome when you say <laughs> But you, oh yeah. my god. Well, everyone loves Grimaldus. And Grimaldus, uh, for anyone who is not some, why are you watching this? If you haven't watched Hell's, like, go on YouTube, <laughs> type out Richard. Uh, Bond, after you've watched this, Hell's episode. Reach. No, after you watch this. pause this, pause <laughs> this, and go search Richard Boylan Hell's Reach and watch it, and then come back because everyone loves Grimaldus. Amazing TV show. 
he is a bit of a chad i have to give it to him um literally a, a self-doubting chaplain his mentor mordred died in battle i think against the greenskins i'm not sure but he died in battle helbert was like grimaldus you are now the reclusiac of the hell's reach crusade Grimaldus was like, oh, I don't really want to do that. Oh, well. And he kind of <laughs> became that sounds, like a, that sounds like a scene from Harry Potter. Right? With, what's, like the little, what's like, it's not the elf that's Dobby, but it's the other one. <laughs> like, <it's... laughs> You're a reclusiac, Grimaldus. I'm a what? Or a reclusiac, but I'm just Grimaldus. <laughs> Did you just turn that into a Hagrid Harry Potter like reference? <laughs> Right, oh, I'm, my God. I'm not the only one who felt that. Good, good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this guy is just zealous rage and purity personified. He he took a bunch of Black Templar Astartes and defended a city on Hell's Reach, the most arguably contested planet in the Imperium space, other than <sighs> you know where. Oh, was that the one with the uh, the planet that's like the replacement for Arcadia? Uh, I was going to say Cadia, but still. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Most contested. I was I was like Cadia, contested, Cadia, and I was like Cadia, Cadia fell, so I'm like can't say that anymore. Anyway. <laughs> uh, Cadia stands. Um, but yeah, literally, he led a bunch of Black Templars to defend Hell's Reach, and he inspired not only his men but also the Imperial Guard and. Probably the servitors too of Hell's Reach to defend the city. He lost all of his squad. Church fell on him, survived because he's a Chad, and went through the Rubicon Primaris. Isn't going to recruit anyone into his squad Grimaldus again. He's like, no, they died. They're staying dead. I don't want to have anyone else fight alongside me. So he's like the lone wolf chaplain bishop of the Black Templars, and he's a badass, and we all love him. He can move in diagonals as the bishop on the board. Yeah, He's exactly. A... He is the move diagonals boy. And one thing that was interesting about Grimaldus that links to my last final, final point of this uh, this episode is uh, Emperor's Champion. So, uh, Eli, do you have anything to mention about the Emperor's Champion? Well, sure. Well, they're the uh, coolest unit in the game, and their model alone is makes me want to play uh, Black Templar's Army. But aside from that, actual lore, um, the Emperor's Champion, it's been a tradition for a while. Obviously, Sigismin was the first one. It's different than Sigismin, though. It wasn't, it's not just you're told you're the Emperor's Champion, but the Emperor himself tells you that you're the Emperor's Champion. So when all the lads get together and they're, they're praying before battle, one guy might get a vision from the Emperor himself. And he'll go talk to the chaplains, and they'll like confirm it. And he'll get sent to a place to like, I don't know, think of think on it. I don't, I lost for words there, but uh, he'll think about it. He'll meditate and whatever, and it'll be confirmed that he's an emperor's champion. And there's only one per crusade, um, so he'll gain a few armaments, including a black sword, which there are ten of. Mm -hmm. um, he will adorn the armor of faith. And am I missing anything? I think that's pretty much their their war gear, and he their duty is to pretty much just seek out enemy champions and commanders and the biggest monsters they can find and uh, kill them. Pretty kill much. Them too. Yeah, utilizing yeah. the blessing and power of the emperor to cast his holy light onto those who would oppose him. Make they are literally like they're seen as the mortal vessel. Of the master of mankind, like the emperor is in them, like the Holy Spirit. Yeah, they, they literally, they literally have a vision that they believe is divine from the emperor. They go to bed one day and they have their little like hell wrecked plushie, and they hug it <laughs> and they go to bed. <laughs> and they're literally like, nom, 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 nom. I love Sigismund, nom, 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 nom. and then they're like, oh, the emperor sent me a vision, and they're like, they'll see like a massive tie like a horde of enemies whether they be green skins or elder or like <laughs> right now, and, right now. and and they'll they'll be like my duty is to kill them and they'll like they'll jump out of bed they will declare to the uh, the chapter's chaplains like bruh i'm the new champion give me the sword and the chaplains will kind of go hmm 
okay and then they'll go to the master of the armory and go bruh i'm the emperor's champion and the master of the armory will go mm, okay and then they'll give them the armor of faith there are like you said there are 10 black swords so there's obviously like nine replicas the original <laughs> sword is always kept on the eternal crusader in like a shrine and i believe that's the one from the hell's reach crusade i'm not sure but that's like the highest esteem. Like I think that one always goes with Hellbrick. Like where Hellbrick goes, Eternal Crusader or like a secondary flagship goes, and the Black Sword of Sigismund goes with him because it's like primary Crusade fleet. And yeah, every Crusade fleet has an Empress Champion. When they go out into battle, they have a specific target in mind they've seen in the vision. They kill them and they go job done, and they will relinquish the title or they will die. And if they die when they're as when they're the Emperor's champion, their name is inscribed on the black sword they were wielding. And so there's like a bunch of names on each black sword of all the fallen Emperor's champions. Um but other than that, that's basically it. it was actually the Black Templars. I was actually wondering that bit at the end why uh it didn't say we are coming on the black sword, but now I guess I know. <laughs> because there's there's ten of them. Um Yeah. And I mean the Emperor's champion does get the blessing of the emperor going back to that uh they are stronger and faster and they have mm -hmm. they can resist psychic powers much better and they have like a complete sense of purpose and no doubts whatsoever mm. that's pretty cool actually i, I actually yeah. didn't know that i didn't know they got souped up i just thought they, they were, got soup they got they got the emperor juice yeah they took their protein shake and they <laughs> their vitamin gummies they, 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 <laughs> they took their squash <laughs> you, oh my god you're gonna hound me about that if any, for any brits listening do you guys drink like concentrate squash please <laughs> comment below do you drink it yes bro this is, oh, this is constant yeah, okay. this is this is a normal day thing in england right this guy really does worship slanesh See, these guys are heretics they don't know, they don't know what's <laughs> oh i'm the heretic yeah sorry i just drink water and beverages <laughs> <laughs> sorry soda <laughs> yes soda <laughs> but before we before we think of these guys as like purely nice, can I just finish on like a quote from the uh, the Black Templars Codex on like one of their Crusade banners? Yeah, of course. course. So on page fifty two of the Black Templars Codex two thousand and five, there's a bunch of Crusade banners with the shields, and there's one called the Jerulas Crusade. And I quote: "Upon the fall of the main spire of the Jerulas Hive." One in every 100 inhabitants was executed for their heresy in the manner of the planet's ancient traditions as depicted on this banner. Note, this banner includes the sword emblem of High Marshal Adonis. It's basically a skeleton with like its arms up, looking very unhappy. Mm -hmm. That's the Black Templars. A double-edged yeah. sword, we could say. <laughs> no, they are, they are it, to our modern sensibilities, quite horrific, but they are the soldiers you in I mean, the Warhammer universe need. They they are essentially the the fight fire against fire. To be fair, to the left of that Crusade banner, there's the Nimbosa Crusade one, and it's literally a towel's head on a on a pike. <laughs> so there's that as well. <laughs> <laughs> Natural. And it's like, yeah, and it not, doesn't I'm even make try and defend anymore. I love the shade. It's like it literally says from an expanding empire of a perfidious but technologically advanced scenery. It doesn't even mention Thanks. their names. Like it's just so hey. genius. I love it. Like it's not even cool. worth mentioning. <laughs> wow. That is uh I mean I like final this. final thoughts, boys. Uh quickly going round. Uh Andy, what do you like final fi final thoughts on Black Templars? I would say a flawed kind of evil but also incredibly fun faction especially because they serve my boy the emperor and uh, eli they're probably my top three favorite space marine chapters they're well done. so i don't know i i appreciate the zeal and the metal and badassery they just encompass they encompass the grim darkness of the far future so well and uh colin I, uh, I will say, I haven't historically been the biggest fan of the Templars, but a lot of that was for meta reasons. Uh, <laughs> hearing all of this about them, it's, you know, I'm, I'm coming around a bit. I'll be honest. Yay! Uh, I, nice. st I still like the Lamenters and Ultramarines more. Nah, That's fine. They're quite cool. Yeah, I like I would... them. They're fine. I like both. 
So uh, <laughs> for people who have been listening, thank you so much for tuning into our, I guess, beginner to expert dive into the uh, Black Templars. They are complicated. <laughs> <Just Yeah. so. laughs> thank you so much. Uh, make sure to subscribe and let us know other topics you want to see in the comments below. And if you'd Thank like you to see much. a video, or oh, sorry, is right for decide one thing at the end? Yeah, of course. Because Do, does anyone have a Black Templar video they want to um, to to plug at the end? Well, but... we'll we'll link them in the description for people. Okay. Check check them out if 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 we have a video, uh, <laughs> check them out. Because <laughs> the uh, all I would say is, I have a breakdown of the Black Templars on my channel, The Remembrancer. <laughs> Sh shameless shill. We're, we're all. <laughs> 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 Buy some right, Dallas right. for the Dark Oz merch. <laughs> Say the rest of our channels. We all, we all have stuff. Go look at it. Just send me money, period. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for listening. Take care, Thank everyone. Thank you very much.